We are here with the one and only Tony Todd. Tony, how's Realmscom treating you? I don't know. When are you going to put me in a movie? How about that? When are we going to raise the budget to put me in a movie, bring me down here for like two weeks or so, and really show you how, the, how it's done? Uh, do, you, would you mind staying in my spare bedroom? While... <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Can't put me up in the suite of the Omni? What's wrong with you, man? Tony, what, what made you become an actor? High school. Uh, I was the only kid. Uh, I had a lot of time on my, to myself, my imaginary friends, and you know, I would, I would, get, I was raised by this wonderful woman, my aunt. But she would give me things for Christmas, like a Monopoly set or a road racing set, things that you need more than one person for. And I actually got quite good at Monopoly by myself. Okay, I do deals and stuff. I always ended up with Park Place and stuff, and, and then somehow I decided which part of me was going to lose, and that was that. Um, but during that time, you know, I had an awkward growth period. I, like, grew six inches in between sophomore and junior year. Totally messed up my balance, my coordination. Next thing you know, the coach is all shaking her head. But the English teacher, she took personal delight in making sure that I could find something. One day she handed me a copy of Shakespeare's The Tempest. And it was like a light bulb went off. And I'm, like, reading this stuff every night, acting all the roles. And I said, this is what I want to do. And my aunt, being the wonderful woman she was, she said, you can do whatever you want to do. I personally want you to be a doctor or lawyer, but there's probably no fun in that because I see your, the joy in your face. And we would used to watch movies together, the 8 o'clock movie every night, and then she'd use it, flip it on me, and do morality tales. But uh, that's where it started. And I never, I always knew I'd do it. And, uh, and, and you've, uh, you've done so much. You know, is there any kind of role you haven't done or that you would want to do? Yeah, I want to do, I want to do more biographies. Uh, 15 years ago, I had the rights to the Lester Young story. Lester Young was a famous alto saxophonist played behind Billy Holiday. I want to do stories like that. I wanted to get the rights to the Sam Cooke story. Uh, two stories that have happened in the annuals of American history that already have the consequences built in. Sam Cooke was assassinated age 33 by a woman in a whorehouse, even though he has one of the best voices ever recorded. So those are the things I, I want to do. You know, as I grow up in life, I'm going to become a director, like Sal, I mean, like Jacob here, and, um, you know, and now that I've worked in over 150 projects, I think I know how to talk to actors and bring out their best work. Well, we'd look forward to a film directed by Tony Todd for sure. Yeah, I think it's coming really soon. Awesome. Uh, now, you and I had an extended conversation about comic whoa, books. Whoa, whoa. Uh, is, is there a comic book movie you would like to do or, or a character you'd like to play? You know, it's already been done, but I really, when I saw the, was it the second or the third Spider-Man, I really would have liked to have had a shot at doing the Sandman. Uh, there's something about him and his character and his plight and his torment that I really, really enjoy. And I love his powers. You know, that whole remorphing, reshaping thing. You know, I, yeah. I was a big fan of Fantastic Four as a kid, but it hasn't, it hasn't been done right. Uh, specifically, Mr. Reed, Dr. Reed, uh, things like that. Now, uh, is, is uh, you know another movie I like? Do you ever see the black and white movie, The Incredible Shrinking Man? Yes. Okay, I, I think that film is a classic. I would love to do a remake of that with my height, shrinking down and becoming a cat's toy. That'd be really cool to see. Yeah. That's a great movie, by the way. I remember seeing that when I was like 13. You know, on TV with commercials, I was mesmerized. The whole concept of being trapped in your basement and things that we take for granted attacking you, like spiders and your household cat, and using a needle as a weapon. You know, that's the cool shit. Now we were, uh, you know, we've seen it kind of pop up on some on some co uh, horror cons here and there. Uh, is there any plans for a Candyman reunion with, with uh, Virginia? Yeah, we've been talking about that for quite a bit, and it just hasn't jail yet. She's, we've agreed to do some that either I had to cancel or she's canceled. Both Virginia and I are working actors. So, you know, we, we try to book these things a year in advance and then we hope we have it in our contracts that, you know, if we get work, we have to cancel. So uh, one, day it'll ha one day it'll happen. I know it will. I just signed something for Sal today. You know, we already had Virginia's name on it. No personalization. I put it on top of that. So I know that. I think there's only three items of me and Virginia's signature on. So if I see that on eBay, I put a little drawing right beside it, too. He can try to blot it out if he wants, but it's like a, it's like a time stamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You got me, Tony. You got me, Tony. Dollars, I'm coming after you. Are there any new projects you can tell us about? Anything you're working on now that we need, that we can be looking forward to? Well, I can tell you about the ones that have already finished. There's a movie called Army of the Damned that's going to have its premiere at Rock and Shock uh, uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts, two weeks from now. It's about demented SWAT cops. Gone bad. I play the leader of the SWAT team. My entrance in that, they they rent, they got a SWAT vehicle, a Hummer, a tank, and I'm in the turret with this badass fucking fucking refitted tourist rifle. And uh, and smoke, and I arrive and I drop down in my boots and like, what's up? And this is like halfway through the film, so it's one of those entrances you gotta live for. It. There's also a movie called Unbroken, where I played a man of the cloth, a theologian who goes around doing exorcisms, kind of casually, doesn't really believe, and all of a sudden he meets his match, he meets his his, his final triumph or defeat, as it may be. And a couple other things. You know, a lot of voiceovers, Justice League of America I just did, Brave and the Bold I just did again. Uh, you know, a couple other things that are skipping. Oh, a movie called The Disappearance I did for Body Glove Entertainment. It's pretty cool. Well, you know, Tony, it's been a pleasure being with you it's all weekend long. It's hanging out with you, man. <laughs> don't, don't show, show his mama his face. We know that he's here, too. Okay, he's acting all innocent and stuff. Stop. <laughs> Hey, Tony, thanks a lot for taking some time to answer some questions for us, man. Uh, so, uh, you know, like I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a pleasure. Uh, it's going to be a memory we're really going to forget. Absolutely. You're going to yeah. take my email so that you can drop me this. I uh, put it on my Twitter feed. Definitely. And also uh, just so you can stay in touch. Yeah, definitely, man. You might, you might hit the Powerball. <laughs> but if you hit the Powerball, Sal, what do you, you, you want to do? I'm going to bring Tony Todd to do my movie. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Have a good one, Tony. Thanks a lot, man.